Hey everybody, Peter Valley from Zen Arbitrage here, and welcome to our quick start guide to getting started with FBA super, super fast. Okay, that's that's the, that's the uh, official title of this video. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps and getting started up with your FBA account, and it's really, really, really simple. And here's one thing when it comes to online book arbitrage and Zen Arbitrage. You really only need one thing to get started. People always are like, all right, so I need to register, uh, incorporate my business, and I need all these fancy tools. You don't need anything with Zen Arbitrage. Zen Arbitrage is a complete business in a box, so to speak. So the only thing you need to get started fast, start making money, is a fulfillment by Amazon account. That's all you need. And so that's that's what this video is about. And so the premise of online book arbitrage, and I'm assuming you know this much if you're watching this video, is this, buying the cheap, merchant fulfilled books, meaning non-FBA books, and then reselling them at a higher FBA price for a profit. Okay, that's it. And there's really no reason to make it any more complicated than that. So of course, the one thing you need, the one missing ingredient, if you're just getting started with Amazon, is you need that FBA account. Okay, so that's what we're gonna talk about. And once you have that FBA account, you can literally hit the ground running. Well, not literally hit the ground running, but you can figuratively hit the ground running, start buying up books in Zen Arbitrage, reselling them, and getting some money in your bank account pretty, pretty quick. So the good news for this entire process is this is really, really easy. Getting set up with an FBA account is like so stupidly easy. And actually, before I made this video, I actually sat down with a friend of mine. I probably should have started the video by mentioning this. I sat down with a friend of mine and I said, okay, and this is a friend who had never sold a single thing on Amazon. I said, okay, I want you to sit down at your computer and I want you to sign up for an Amazon account. And she was like, all right. Uh, where do I go? And I was like, no, you don't understand. I'm at, I want you to start go from knowing nothing, zero coaching, to simply getting up and running with an FBA account. And so she went on Google, she typed sign up an FBA. She went through the entire process and I clocked her in in about nine minutes. Okay, so this is like, and this is with her like having to fumble around for, it wasn't even nine minutes if she actually went straight through the process, but she had to like run in the next room and like get her like credit card and all this stuff, right? So. This is a super fast process, super easy, and I just looked over someone's shoulder as they did it in real time, and I can confirm, even though I haven't had to do it myself for like 10 years, it's really, really easy, okay? So here's the thing to understand, is that this is not hard because Amazon wants you to be an FBA seller. They actually want you to sign, they wanna make this as frictionless and easy as possible. So Amazon is not gonna be throwing any obstacles in your way. There is no like conspiracy to keep you out of FBA. This is, they want it to be as simple as possible and so there really isn't much to it. There's not gonna be any tricks, any hurdles, or any brick walls. So the big thing I want you to get here is do not overthink this part. There is nothing, there, you would have to actively go out of your way to make this complicated, okay? So there's just a few steps to it and you will be good to go. So the step number one is to sign up for an FBA account, okay? So if you already have an Amazon selling account, meaning a non-FBA account, you can just simply add FBA to your account with a couple clicks. It doesn't, there's really not much to it. Um, and you can just, it's really simple. Um, if you don't have it selling an, an Amazon seller account, you have to get one. So that takes a couple minutes. You go to it's just sellercentral.amazon.com, just go through the steps. They will make it very, very clear what you're supposed to do. And the next question is, well, what are you gonna need? Okay, it's very, very basic. You need a phone number that Amazon can reach you at and they will verify the phone number. If for some crazy reason you don't have a phone, you can actually just set up a Google Voice number for free um, and it'll actually go like to your computer. So it's it, so this is like, and if you're overseas and you just want a US number, or whatever the case may be, I even though I don't think you should need one, just set up a Google Voice number, really simple. You need a bank card. Pretty straightforward. I think most of us have one of those. And you need a social security number, okay? Don't overthink this. Here's a list of what you do not need. You do not need to be registered as, you know, a corporation. You don't need, like, a past. You don't need, like, 90% of what you think you need. You just need these three things, okay? Um, now, there is one sort of caveat here. For some overseas sellers, and it's not all, but some overseas sellers, Amazon will flag you and they just say, hey, we need a couple more things from you. And the one thing I hear that they generally need is they want a proof of your identification card. So they ask you to like scan a copy of your ID and just like mail it to them. Um, and you just wanna make sure the address matches what's you, what you have on your Amazon seller account, which shouldn't be that hard. You can just go ahead and edit that, but that's all they look for. The only thing I've ever heard people getting tripped up on is if the, the addresses don't match. So you just wanna make sure they match. And again, if Amazon asks you for this, it's probably because you're overseas. It's not a big deal. They ask that of a lot of people, so don't, don't freak out about that. 
And then the next question is, what type of account should you choose? Because you're given an option. Um, there's a personal account, which is free, and there's a professional account. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that Amazon will steer you towards the professional account. So they kind of sort of coerce you into the professional account. And you actually have to kind of go out of your way to opt for the free account. So I remember my friend who I just mentioned, I looked over her shoulder, she, there was some confusion about this where she didn't even realize she had the option. So Amazon doesn't make it very clear because they kind of try to steer you towards the paid account. But if you're only gonna start out selling just a, a handful of books a month, say a couple dozen or less, um, you'll probably wanna start with a free account until you get some momentum. And so um, you just wanna make sure you look for that option. And then the professional account's $40 a month, but what's what's key thing to understand about the professional account, the key benefit is they actually waive the $1 per book fee. So there's an extra fee if you have a, if a personal account. So the basic math is if you're selling more than, 40, more than $40, 40 books rather, a month, you actually save money with the professional account. So I would hope that most of you, if you're starting out with Zen Arbitrage, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be sourcing more than 40 books a month. So most of you are probably gonna to wanna to go with the professional account. Um, but again, it's just, it just depends. The other thing, Amazon, as of the time I'm recording this, this is a very new thing, but Amazon just implemented something where they're limiting the storage space for people who have the free account to I think it's like 10 cubic feet a month. And I don't really know exactly what that translates to. It's probably like, you know, 20 books or something, or maybe a couple dozen books. But what the point is, if they're big books, but the point is, it's it. There's a limitation on this your storage space. Okay, so if so if you, I would just say as a rough rule of thumb, if you plan to sell more than a few, a couple dozen books a month, or plan to actually buy more than a couple dozen, which I honestly think you should, um, you probably gonna want to go with the professional account. Okay, so that's that's kind of how that's kind of how the math works out. So step two is to source your books. Now this is what every other video in the Zen Arbitrage Resources page is about. So this is really really simple. All you're doing there, and again, we this is what all our other training is about, so I don't need to go into that here, but you're basically just finding high demand books that have big gaps between the cheapest copy and the cheapest FBA copy and buying low and selling high. It's as simple as that. And you can have them shipped to you or our prep service partner who will ship them into Amazon for you. And if you do not, if you're not set up with a prep service partner yet and you want to be, um, go ahead and email the support email. We will set you up. So this is going to be mandatory if you're outside of the U.S. and it's optional if you're in the U.S. Some people in the U.S. prefer it because uh, you know it just streamlines the process and they can actually run a business without even touching a book or even seeing a book, which is kind of cool. Um, but there is a one dollar. Oh, actually, I won't even give a price out because we, we may change the prep service in the future. But there's going to be roughly a one dollar per book fee. Okay, so if you are using the prep service, here's the process. So you purchase the book, you get it shipped to the prep company. And um, it's optionally, you can create a listing for your inventory, although um, the prep service we set you up with will actually do that for you if you choose for a small fee. And then you simply copy and paste the, um, the title of the book, the, the ASIN, which they'll explain to you what that is if you don't know, and the condition and other details they ask for into a Google Doc or something similar that's shared with the prep company. And then when the book arrives, the prep company simply compares it against the information that you entered and they just verify that all the, con the condition looks good. They alert you to any discrepancies or any damage that you should know about and they prepare that book for shipment. And the prep company, you grant them limited access to your Amazon account. So they, they, there's no security risk here. All they can do is deal with shipments and they'll walk you through that process and they simply label the books for you and they ship them to Amazon. It's as simple as that. And so basically they handle all the, you know, the receiving and shipping part. So there's really nothing for you to do um, at all. It's, it's pretty cool. And so again, email if you wanna get set up with that and um, it's just a great way to streamline the process. And step three is to create your listing. Now again, this is optional. Um, for you if you have the prep service handle this part. So the prep service will create a listing for you. Um, so it's totally up to you. I personally think this is so easy. I, I would wanna handle it myself. I wouldn't wanna pay anyone because creating the listing is like the easiest part of the process. So you can create a listing one of two ways. You can do it directly on Amazon. Okay, so you just simply click, at, go to your inventory tab within Seller Central, then you click add a product and you just go through the steps. You enter the ISBN for the book or the ASIN, the, there's two numbers that identify a book. You add the condition and so forth. It's pretty, pretty simple. Or you can use listing software, which I strongly recommend because it really, really makes the process go a lot faster. So the option for listing directly on Amazon is you go to the inventory tab there, you see on the, on the left, and this may actually change by the time you see this video, but, um, but it should look pretty close. So the inventory tab, and then you'll see a page that looks just like this, where it says list a new product, and you simply enter either the name of the product, the UPC, the ISBN, or the ASIN. And if it's, um, and you hit search, and Amazon will bring up that book. 
And option number two is to use listing software. There's a bunch of options like ScanLister, ScanPower, Inventory Lab, et cetera. And the benefits of this is that it really streamlines the process and saves you a lot of time. So if you're doing any kind of volume at all, I'm usually gonna recommend you use listing software because doing listings directly on Amazon can be really cumbersome. Step number four is to print and label your book. So again, if you're using the prep service, you can skip this part, but printing and labeling your books goes like this. Um, you basically, uh, well, it actually depends if you're, if you're listing on Amazon or using a list, listing software. This goes a lot faster if you're using listing software. But basically, you're gonna be printing your labels out on either big sheets, like eight and a half, 11, eight and a half by 11 um, Avery labels, or um, a Dymo printer, which will actually spit out the labels one at a time, which is what I what I use, and I strongly prefer it. So you can get one of these used for like sixty five dollars. It's Dymo four fifty. I think it's the Label Writer printer. Just type in Dymo four fifty in Amazon or eBay, and you'll see a bunch of listings. And um, and so that's that's actually the, the most efficient way. Um, you can again, you can also use the Avery labels and print them out in big sheets. And all you do is simply take the. And this is what this is. This prints out the FBA barcode, if I wasn't clear about that. So um, this is how the Amazon workers at the warehouse, this is what they scan, and this actually tells the system, okay, this book has arrived at the warehouse and actually makes it live for sale. So um, this is this is pretty important. So, um, but am, again, when you go and make a listing, whether it's listing software or uh, Amazon, they will give you a, this, they'll walk you through the steps of printing out the labels, and then you simply take that label and put it over the barcode of the book. Really, really simple. Just simply place it over the barcode and that's it. And that's all you have to do. Next up is to ship your book. So you simply put, you take your boxes. So assuming you're doing the shipping yourself, you take, um, Amazon will, will group your books into shipments. So they might say, okay, you've got 50 books you're shipping in. We're going to send 10 of them to one warehouse. We're going to send 30 of them to another warehouse. And we're going to send another 10 to a third warehouse. So you pretty much have to do what Amazon says. Amazon's going to tell you, and they're probably will tell you where the books are going. They're probably going to split your shipments up. So you, that's something you have to be prepared for. And so you just group the books depending on how Amazon tells you to group them. Again, they'll tell you exactly what they want. So they'll go, take these 20 books, put them in this box, take the 10, put them in this box, take these 10 and put them in this other box. Really, really simple. So you simply group them as they tell you. And then you and, and you can and any shipment can be made up of as many boxes as you want. Okay. So Amazon will ask you when you go to complete a shipment, they will ask you how many boxes are in the shipment. And you could say, okay, well, you told me that 20 books are going to this one warehouse, but I put them in two separate boxes. So you go ahead and enter two boxes and then they will print out, they will give you um, a PDF where you can print out two labels, one for each box. So once that's a shipping label and what the shipping label does is it allows you to get the super, super, super cheap UPS partnered shipping rate, which works out to be like sometimes as cheap as like 20 cents per book or even less, um, depending on how many items you're shipping. So the more books you're shipping, the cheaper the shipping gets per book. So, um, so whatever it is, they will give you a label and you take the print, the shipping label and you put it on the outside of the box and then you simply tape the label down. That's all you have to do. And so then from that point, you simply, I'll, I'll walk you through this in a second. You just simply tape the, take the box to UPS and they will scan that label on the box and there's really nothing more left for you to do. So again, Amazon will tell you exactly what to do here and how to group the box, uh, the books into different shipments. So don't get too confused here. Um, the shipment is basically, think of a shipment as every, every warehouse that your books are going to has a shipment, has one shipment. And then within each shipment, it can be as many boxes as you want or as few as you want. You just have to tell Amazon and that's it. And so shipping your books, basically when you, the way you do this and you initiate this process and get these shipping labels is you go to manage your shipments on your inventory tab and then they just simply walk through the process. They'll ask you um, how how many uh, uh, books are in each box and what books they are. And they'll ask you um, the weight of the boxes. There's a couple things. And you can waive a lot of this. In other words, you can say, hey, I'm gonna willing to pay a little bit more to not have to upload uh, my inventory sheet for you that tells you what you know what books are in which box. Or if you use listing software, they'll take care of this for you. So this is another real, actually huge benefit to using listing software is you get to skip a lot of the the, the, the uh, having to tell Amazon where the, uh, you know, what's in each box, which can be quite cumbersome. So I strongly recommend listing software. And then you simply just take the boxes to UPS and drop them off. And UPS can be an actual UPS store. It can be a drop box somewhere. It can be a, a Staples. A lot, there's a lot of UPS receiving stations and like on chain stores like Staples, um, Office Supply, Office Depot, 
Um, lots of stores, lots of places uh, will accept UPS packages totally for free. And you simply walk in, they'll see that label, they'll recognize, okay, this is a prepaid shipment. And so you can either choose to get a receipt at that point if you want some extra insurance to be, to be able to, you know, just prove in the case they lose the box or something to prove that it was you're not responsible. You can get a receipt or you can choose to waive that part. I usually skip that. I've never had UPS lose a box out of thousands and thousands and thousands of boxes. And then the next step is just to wait for a sale. So your only job now is to keep your prices competitive and wait for a sale. So once the books are out of your hands, basically UPS and Amazon takes care of the rest. UPS gets the book the books to the Amazon warehouse. Amazon scans them in and makes them live for sale and there's and then when they when someone buys your stuff, they simply ship it out for you and the money just shows up in your bank account. So there's really not much to do. All you have to do is keep your prices competitive and wait for a sale and we have separate videos on how to maintain your prices uh, effectively. So that is basically it. It really is as simple as that. And you can really be up and selling with FBA in just a few minutes. That's the entire process. And it's one of those things where everyone, I feel like everyone wants to make it really complicated, but there's just no reason for it.